I got a tent. I'm doing this whole paint station so I can spray the cabinets. So excited. The kitchen is going to be finished this week. Do you wish that you had just bought all your cabinets? Okay, I'm gonna get this set up because we're just gonna run them through this thing. A skinny little piece of plywood. And I remember thinking to myself, what would you ever need that many clamps for? Yeah, and now I know. Hello guys, welcome back to the vlog. There's only one thing that I'm going to be doing for the next like three days, cabinet doors. <sighs> We've got to get them finished. It is 82 degrees outside. I am in short sleeves and shorts, wild. It was cold and rainy yesterday. The weather has been slowly getting to this week, which is the prettiest, warmest, sunniest week so far this year, so it's incredible. It's going to allow me to paint outside. I got a tent, I'm doing this whole paint station so I can spray the cabinets so it has a nice finish and it goes quicker, obviously, because I can paint them all at once. I've got 40 total. Now I've got two of those done. Well, I'm not counting, like it was 43 with the refrigerator. I've got two done, but the other ones that I had cut and started working on, I had to scrap. the doors only overlap half an inch so it changes the measurement i would have had these weird spaces and spacing between so it was definitely a learning curve but i've moved those to scrap that's actually the scrap wood that i did the feet out of i did the feet so good can you see the little feetsies there there over there they look so good just such a small small detail but really finishing that out. So today we are doing cabinet doors. You stay, stay inside, Kinsley. You're not making cabinets with mama. No, no, you stay. Oh, it's so sunny and warm. But I have a master plan and I've got all the measurements and it's, I think this is going to go really well. We need to unload my car. Texted my plumber this morning to see if he was off another job and um, he was actually, what, what's happened, he was in a really bad car wreck and he's been recovering and physical there. It's been like crazy. And he's such an amazing human. I've just been like, you know, uh, just my heart went out to him. So um, we kind of been waiting. I texted him. It's been a minute since I talked to him. I was hoping he was feeling better. And he said, yes, he is coming this week. He's installing the oven. So I sent him like pictures of it. You know, our oven is pretty specific. And it's not really common. I just wanted to make sure that he could have all of the parts that he needed from it. So I sent him pictures of the manual and things. So I'm texting him. He said, I can't wait to see the kitchen. I know you get down and dirty. It's gotta look so nice. <laughs> He's so sweet. I'm so excited. The kitchen is going to be finished this week. By this Sunday's video, when you guys are watching this, it's going to be finished. I'm like hyped. Okay, we have things to do for it to be finished. Um, I've got to put this wood somewhere. I got a couple of different sizes, like widths, because some is for the drawer inserts, because that's another thing we have to tackle. So this is all of the wood that I got. I got all the good ones they had which is exactly what i kind of estimated roughly i would need uh, i wanted to get a few more but we'll see how far we get i'm gonna make the most out of the measurements and make sure that i'm optimizing each board I've got my list here you saw the video i made the guide i numbered all the cabinets so i knew where they were going to go back and i really want to have a good system when i um, work on painting uh, so that I know where they're going to go back and just make it super easy on myself so I'm not like constantly remeasuring a cabinet and figuring out where it goes. Um, so I also have my, my cut list. So this is about being smart. I always buy eight foot boards, eight foot long, uh, because I know that that will fit in my car. <laughs> So it's easier to manage too. When I have like super long pieces of wood, it's really hard for me to like get them on the table and cut them. Eight foot is like gold, is, is, is really good for me. But you wanna be smart in how you're cutting them to not have like super excess waste and make the 15 boards that I actually bought 
go really far. I'm gonna try and be really smart about this. So let's see how many inches are in the eight feet and then kind of like work backwards from there. So eight times 12 is 96. So I've got 96 inches per board. Also something that's really good about these boards is I bought the wider board. If I cut a piece at 19 and a half, I'm actually getting two pieces. I'm getting the right and the left side of the cabinet. It makes it more manageable for me to hold on to the wood when I'm routering. Just overall, like really good. So let's see, if I got 96, I'm gonna do 19 and a half minus 19 and a half minus 19 and a half minus 11. So if I just did a rough estimate, the first board will make me three cabinets. 15 times three is 45. And I only need like 40. I think this is gonna work. Okay, I'm just gonna be pretty smart about it and number as I go. Let me get started. Okay, so I'm thinking a good number system is after I cut each board, I'm gonna put the measurement on it um, so I can easily reference it without having to measure it again. And then I'm gonna put the number of the cabinet. So for instance, this is one, this is cabinet one. And I'm gonna put either P or B behind it because I either need to paint it pashmina or black. That's gonna be really easy for me to separate them in the paint station to what needs to be painted. They're all gonna be primed the same, but one's gonna be pashmina and one's gonna be black. So this is one P 19 and a half. This was the waste on the first board. I call that a success, truly. Um, and I will probably use this for something. So I'm gonna put it in my scrap box. <laughs> I got a feeling that this could be a little more than feelings. If I'm being honest, honestly, you got me where you want it. You got me playing every card and spending all my time trying to find out more about you. Cause I really want you in my space, picking up it. Okay, update. I've got sawdust everywhere. Story of my life. And I've cut this many, 18 pieces, and that makes nine cabinets. I've used three boards so far, so that's a little bit of a an update. I, I feel like I can get through this list of cuts pretty quickly. Sometimes it scares me to do this whole process and then um, move on to the next step because what if I'm messing up? You know, I, I've done it enough to know that I'm confident in these numbers and the, the, uh, the stage. So I'm gonna keep cutting and then we're gonna router, cut the boards in half and assemble. I have to clamp them, glue and clamp. That's how they're, they're joined together uh, and I only have like three sets of clamps. I'm actually gonna call my dad and see if he has any clamps I can borrow so I can like keep going. This project is so repetitive. I find my brain like, I don't know, r running off into project land and like thinking about stuff. So I asked you guys on Instagram a few hours ago uh, if you had like like a Q&A. So I figured we can I can answer some questions. It'll keep my brain, you know, stimulated. Let's see if there's any um, questions that have come in. Oh, oh my. Every time I do this, you guys have so many questions. I love that though. Mom will be happy about this. When is your mom's new art collection coming out? So she is painting right now a collection. Uh, she's working on it. So she's thinking March. Have you found yourself missing your LA house? Yes. I, I love this house. This house, leaves me feeling so accomplished. This this house is just like a pure expression of my creativity and like there's so many projects, but this house more than often makes me feel tired because of all of the projects and because this feels like a project house. It doesn't feel like I'm, I'm living and it's my quote unquote home, if that makes sense. Like it feels like a project, it feels like work. Our California house is very special and it feels like home. And 
it just it it just different. So yes, I have found myself so so many times missing our LA house. Um, even though the weather has been really bad there, it, the weather's much better here right now. Um, but besides that, like yes, I have I have found myself missing it like so much. It's kind of crazy. Have you thought about making your own coffee table? Yes, I think that's what I'm gonna do. I have some ideas, but that'll be a project when um, we go back into the living room and continue to work on that after the kitchen and the coffee pantry and things are completed. Okay, the next question was, do you wish that you had just bought all your cabinets? You know, they have been a lot of work, not near as much work as all of the windows that we restored or the flooring, but I was recently talking to someone that got a quote for their house here in this area and what they wanted for their kitchen cabinets, the company quoted them $100,000 to buy cabinetry, not in a way of like maybe going to Ikea and getting the boxes and then um, doing something special to the doors that you can buy prefab. Um, I do think that there are, are cheaper options than the $100,000 and not making them yourself. Um, but the quality I think of what I'm getting is the quality of the $100,000 quote because I'm making them myself. So when I, when I think that it's a lot of work, I just remind myself that it could have been $100,000 and I continue to make cabinet doors. I've actually thought about this question a lot in my line of, of work too. Would you continue the renos if you got pregnant? or would you hire help? Um, I've thought about that a lot. Romeo and I are very much in the um, mindset and the time in our lives where we wanna start a family. And I've thought about it and be like, oh, well, I do have six more months of the renovation left. And what would that look like for uh, finishing them versus uh, would I hire help? Or, or I guess it would be, depend on how I would be feeling. And I think we're in a very good stage of being in the pretty stage of the cottage to where I'm not doing demo. I'm not doing like crazy like stuff like I was in the beginning. Through this house, I've proven that I can do the work myself and I've learned so much that I would be able to hire more tradesmen to do more of the work that maybe um, my body wouldn't allow me to do. And I am kind of physically drained from that side of the work and want to do more of the pretty stuff. So I've thought about that a lot actually. And I do think that it makes sense for my own health and my own, you know, sanity even outside of starting a family to just hire the help on things that I know would be um, really, really physically draining on me personally, personally because of going through the process already. Uh, so yeah, I would definitely hire more help. I feel like it just, makes most sense, you know, going into the next phase. Update, you guys. I did it. I just cut my last piece. Took me about an, maybe an hour. What time is it? Ah, 45 minutes. That ain't bad when you have all the, the plans done. 38 and a half T for top and bottom. It's my code. 32P. Bam. Okay. I also separated them into two columns. Rails and styles are what they're called. Styles are the side pieces and the rails go across. Uh, so they get routed differently because uh, of how they put together. So I kind of grouped them. So these are all of the rails and these are all of the styles. They're just, there's equal amounts. They're just stacked differently. Next we have the router. So this is why I always go back and check. For some reason, I have one extra perfect amount in the top and bottom section stack. I have one extra. Tell me how I have one extra in the other stack. That makes absolutely no sense. I have to go back through them now. I guess I cut one twice. Maybe I didn't cross it off, so I I cut it again. I also went back, measured the cabinet that I haven't even built yet, made those cabinets. I've used every piece of wood, so I calculated correctly and had very minimal waste. Works for me. 37, I've got, wait, what? It was a good thing I went back through them because I made a duplicate number 35, so I can use this for something else. You know, I didn't router it or anything. And one of the ones that were in here were supposed to be in that stock. So I just made sure everything was correct. 
we are about to get our very first house how would you start finding and deciding on decor going through the process of buying two homes um here at the cottage and in california i've find myself like the very first step is i kind of let the home uh speak to what style it should be right i'm very much a person that likes homes to fit in not only the area but also the original architecture that was in the house but granted i tend to pick homes that are older that have a style general style direction or at least characteristics that i can pull from and add to um, and then kind of mix in my own style or whatever i'm loving at the time so i very much buy a house that's fitting to a style that I like, you know what I mean? So with the cottage, I love old, I love antiques, I love vintage, so it just, it was a no-brainer, it fit, but I also introduced other things into the house that were specific to this area, or I salvaged things from the original house, you know, that I can reuse. Um, so this house particularly is more, you know, vintage, antique, so that it would, you know, a modern updated version of a 1910 home. The one in LA, since we're in California, it has more of a coastal influence, um, but it still has all the characteristics of kind of like an English farmhouse and, um, you know, French. So I kind of lean into the style of the house. So look at the characteristics of your house, see what you can use. If you have more of a modern build and you're more of a modern person, that's the direction that you that you might go. Start pinning on Pinterest and then start in the room that's going to make it feel most homey. You know, for us, we started in the living room um, because we spend a lot of time there. And I knew collectively Romeo and I would feel more comfortable if the living room had, it felt like more, it was more put together. So I used what we had and also introduced um, more items that I thought would fit the house like the large kind of like Persian vintage rug um, to bring some warmth in so I'd say start with your house like what does your house say <laughs> I know that sounds crazy but I feel like it's it's true help me convince my husband to let me build my own cabinets like you did <laughs> You can totally do it. I mean, it is a large undertaking. Obviously, I'm stand procrastinating right now, standing next to a whole bunch of wood that needs to be routered, but you can totally do it. I think what will convince him is go get a quote first. If you kind of calculate how much it's going to cost, like how many cabinets you're going to build, I would say maybe I should figure out the math and, and figure out how much like each kind of cabinet box uh, would have cost. Like I obviously have all the tools to do it. So you have to invest in the tools and then also the material and then also the time. You know, so if you have a limited time, if you're only gonna do like a weekend project, it would take quite a while for your kitchen to be completed. Um, but then again, you'd go faster than me because I have, I'm filming it all. So it's, it takes me a little longer. Yeah, another question, how much money have you saved doing all the kitchen cabinetry yourself? I am gonna be um, figuring it all out because I wanna do a podcast episode on like um, the budget that we set and was it worth doing the DIY projects and did we really save money? Because sometimes DIY projects can actually cost you more in a way, um, but some mo most of the time in my experience, it's cost me way less. So I wanna do a whole budgeting thing. So I don't know specifically, but I will know really soon. Okay, I'm gonna bring my router hole contraption up here so that we can start to use it. Ugh. Next question is what what's the best type of finish to paint bedroom and living room walls? Satin. I love this thing. I still can't believe I built it. <laughs> so cool what i like to do on walls is i i don't like a lot of sheen so i don't like when we get into to high gloss gloss or satin kind of things for walls um i only do up to satin that's the highest i'll ever go and i only do that on trim and more surfaces that are going to be more durable like trim baseboards casings cabinetry um anything like that i do satin on walls, I either choose eggshell or flat. The only exception to that would be if it's in a bathroom. In a bigger bathroom, it's okay, but in a smaller footprint, um, it's harder to do a matte flat finish or probably even an eggshell. I would up it to a satin. In a bathroom, maybe. I'd have to be really convinced, but that's kind of like my guide. Walls are always flat or eggshell, more durable services are always satin, and I never do anything higher than that. 
no more sheen. I'm just, I'm more of a matte girl. Okay, I'm gonna get this set up because we're just gonna run them through this thing. I like to use scrap wood as a kind of test. You know, I wanna retest the placement, make sure that, um, you know, the, the router is in the right spot. Just curious why you and Romeo aren't married yet. Do you think you'll get married? Lots of marriage questions. Romeo and I have been together. We just celebrated our, uh, I always think that it's a year more than it is because it's been so long, 14 years in February. It was 14 years um, on February 3rd. And we met young and we just have the most amazing relationship and we've always been um, career focused and that's just how it's always been. We've always been building businesses for both of us and really just like focusing on that. Most of the time I call him my fiance or whatever because I just feel like boyfriend, like calling him that just doesn't do our relationship justice and, and how um, serious it actually is, you know what I mean? Uh, so <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll call it my fiance or my husband or whatever. I even usually wear this ring on this finger just cause it's other people's perception, not our own. Um, but we're just great. Yes, we do plan on getting married, um, but we do not want to have a big wedding. I've never wanted that. I wasn't a girl that had like, you know, books and planned out their wedding. I do want a beautiful dress and I want to be, I would love to just be me and him kind of thing. It's just like, it was always just, about us and it, it would feel really weird to like when I think about like saying vows in front of people that is like super weird like for me like I, I wouldn't want I'm kind of I'm a very introverted person too like it, it's weird like right now I'm talking to you guys but in reality I'm very very introverted I can be extroverted I'm an introverted extrovert but if I had to choose and what's going to make me happy we would not have a big wedding and the same for him I'd elope in a heartbeat you know what I mean so yeah we plan on getting married I feel like everyone's gonna ask that but we just don't feel I think society pressured us for so long and just like people asking it's like just doesn't matter to us it yes we want it but it's like we're very happy and I don't need that to be happy. I don't need a paper to prove it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Why is this not tightening? What's what's going on with this? Okay, that's much better. Okay, so I'm gonna test it out. The first cut we're gonna make is the in-between cut. So it's gonna be kind of like a river, a, a, a strip of a hole, quarter inch deep in the center. So there's gonna be a quarter inch on, on each side that's full width. <laughs> that, did that make sense? <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna raise this this blade up so that it's going to be in the center of this board and then we're gonna test it. Let's see. So you can kind of see it. You see how this one is skinnier than that side? Very slight, but it makes a big difference. So we are going to raise it. A little more. Let's test it again. Much better. See, you just kind of have to make sure that it's getting in the center. You don't want it too high or too low. Okay, one more question and I'm gonna um, router for a little bit. I like this one. Five items you would take with you on a deserted island. Well, I have questions. Can it be technology? <laughs> um, Romeo would be one. Can he be a thing? Can he be an item? I'd need him. Kinsley, can he be an, can she be an item? Romeo, Kinsley, my Kindle, some kind of fire element. Or I would have to seriously learn how to start a fire. This is hard. Well, I knew those for sure. So I got, I got four, I have one more. <gasps> okay, I have entertainment. I don't need my phone, for sure. Like I don't need social media, I don't need my phone, none of that. Uh, my mom, can I take people? Can items be people? My mom, Romeo, Kinsley, my Kindle, and a fire element. I feel like if I can start a fire, I can cook something, I can be fed. I'm pretty sure I could like find a waterfall, river, natural rain, catch rainwater for water. I feel like that would be something I could accomplish and I wouldn't need to take with me. But then would I not have clothes? <laughs> oh, this would be hard. I would definitely take the people, my, my people. 
Sorry, my brother. What about my brother? He's going to be sad. My dad. What about my... Okay. Okay, I'm going to start routering, but the last uh, last question for now. Can you tell us Romeo's top three secrets for perfectly fresh laundry? Romeo is a freak about laundry and his clothing, my clothes. He washes all my clothes, except for when he's not here. I think his core secret is those little pellets those little they're like beads the downy beads that have different scents he uses those he cleans the washer so that no nothing is left over from like before into the new load and so he has like i don't know different things that he does to like the washer he runs like cycles and stuff and actually cleans them so think about that if your clothes are not smelling like as great as you want them to or there's a tinge of like something you can smell that is not satisfying you um try and clean your washer like google that i don't i don't know exactly what it is but it's it's something something along those lines all right let's run some routers shall we and we're running them on each side so like i told you guys the width of these boards are a lot wider than the rails and styles of our cabinet front so you have an idea a reference this is what we're accomplishing right now here's our cabinet doors with the trim on the inside and these are three inch wide kind of like border frame around a piece of quarter inch plywood. So you see how wide this is? It's a lot wider than this. That's because this makes two of them, one on each side. Um, so it just helps. I saw someone do that online, older gentleman that was a whiz at making cabinet doors and I watched all of his videos and it really helped me. So I'm, I'm very, very happy about that. That looks really good. See? And it's a hole all the way down. You guys, my arms just got a serious workout. Pushing all that wood, all those pieces through the router. I already feel it like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. Hey, I got an arm workout out of this. I had to push it through the top and the bottom piece. Gets pushed through six times on the router because you need to make these edges. Six times 42. Let's see how many times I push that through. 252 times just for those pieces and then twice for the other. So 336 router edges. My arms feel it. This was a big accomplishment, getting everything cut and everything organized and everything. All that it's going to be now is putting it, putting them together and cutting the quarter inch plywood, which is over there. Let's put them back in order again. And also I messed up one. I'm gonna have to redo piece 24B. I'm gonna save this right there. So I remember, I just, it was such a small piece. I got confused on which side got what. It, it threw me off. I have some scrap, I can cut another one. Kind of put them back in order so that they're easier to find. One, two, three sides, one, two, three tops, bottoms. So now I need to cut them like three inches. Yeah. Table saw. I've now used three different tools to accomplish this. Miter saw to actually cut the big pieces, the router to make the joints, and now I'm using the table saw to cut the three inches. One, two, and three are drawers, so they're gonna be, you know, long, kind of wide and wide and skinny, wide and short, if you will. This is what it's going to look like. It'll be a skinny little piece of plywood. A skinny, just right here. I feel like most of the drawers are gonna look like that because I want all of the frames to be the same. They're all three inches. So when you get down to a drawer that's only eight inches tall, which this is the skinniest one, there's only gonna be a little bit of kind of like negative space um, or center space, but it's gonna look chunky and good. I like that. It got dark really fast. I've been out here all day. You guys, I feel accomplished though. I feel like I've done the hard work. Now it's just about the putting it together, like the easy work and like waiting. But I think if I time it right, I may be able to, since I have three sets of clamps, by the time I get to the third one, the first one may be dry enough to take the clamps off. But I'm gonna see. It's supposed to, like, I kind of read on the bottle 
it's kind of supposed to stay clamped for see minimum clamping for a minimum of 30 minutes so do i think 30 minutes i don't think it's going to take me 30 minutes to do to put together the other two i'm gonna ask my dad if he has some clamps um, okay now that we're to the calmer work let's um let me grab a stool i'm tired actually this will do <laughs> I'm gonna sit on this. I'm so glad that you guys are liking, like, I love directing a video just as much as I like doing the project. I've always been really particular about how to get a shot from a camera, like what you see. And I've really amped that up recently because I just, I, I just love it. I love moving the camera a lot. And it's just me and my camera, me and a tripod, literally just like this. So when you guys see a YouTube video, it's me with my camera and my tripod in a room, and that's exactly how I like it. I can go at my own pace with a project. I can move my camera as many times as I want. I'm personally directing the video. I know what shots I'm gonna have leading up to editing. I, you know, I'm thinking about music and how I want the video to feel and I just, I love that. So that's really the content creation part of my job um, is making something enjoyable for you guys to watch. Um, and I think I just saw a question. Oh, do you often do many takes of one thing when filming or do you just do once and work with whatever you have? So with my type of projects and I don't really get a second chance, I kind of have to go with what I have, like, you know, cutting wood or, building something or explaining something i only get one chance i've gotten pretty good at knowing um you know making sure that all of my camera equipment is working oh it's getting dark it just got so much darker but making sure that all my camera equipment is working my mics are on i've gotten really good the only time you'll see me kind of like falter a little bit is during vlogmas or on the vlog you know it's a little more effortless with the main channel I am, cr I'm crazy particular with my renovation videos. So I have to work with what I have. I always opt to have more than less because I'm directing a video as I'm filming it, but I want more to work with. So I film, sometimes I film a lot more than I actually put into a video just because it doesn't make sense or it's gonna make it longer or it ruins the pace of the video. There's a lot that goes into that side. Let's put these together. I cut my plywood pieces. I'm trying to remember how I, how I did this. Oh yeah, I put these together like that and I put glue three inches and kind, of, kind of mark it a little bit so that I know how much glue to put. A good ooze is good. You want the wood glue to ooze. Means that you got a lot in there and it's gonna be nice and stuck together. some gunk in my wood glue. I kind of went overboard. Because we're going to come back and sand regardless. I should put down something. I just don't want the glue to ooze everywhere on this plywood table that I have. I got it set. So now I'm going to get it clamped and then take it off of this paper so to speak, so it doesn't stick to it. I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit. You bought another house. What's your plan with the first one you bought? Uh, so this house that we're currently at right now uh, was always a investment property and a project for me. And um, the pandemic really forced us to think about retirement early kind of thing. It's like, this was always the plan to have a house here close to my parents later on in life. The pandemic happened and it just like, I don't know, this things happened. And, um, oh, this is, is this gonna fit? Oh, I need the big ones. Oh, you got it. So the pandemic happened and, are these my big ones? Wait, what is happening here? Oh no. These are not the big ones. I only have one big one. So this property was always an investment property and a, and a project. Um, so we we plan on keeping it. It's it's fully paid off. What it costs us is property taxes every year and utilities are very minimal when we're we're not here. Um, but we have you know when we are here, it's still 
really affordable. Um, so it doesn't cost us anything to have this house and it's a great investment. It's an asset for us. And then also it was a plan to kind of turn it into Airbnbs, put like cottages in the back. That's not something that's on the horizon currently. I'd like to start a family instead right now, um, but that's still an option. I just really wanted us to have options in life and I'm not gonna have enough clamps. Okay, I got all three set. I kind of waited and traded off the clamps. I'm gonna have to figure something out tomorrow. The large clamps are really expensive. It's so frustrating. There was a estate sale one time and there was a whole tool outside place that a guy had and he had tons of clamps. And I remember thinking to myself, what would you ever need that many clamps for? Yeah, and now I know and I should have bought them at the estate sale. Oh, I took a bath. My body just like started to like shut down. Like I was like sore. I've just been working on those cabinets all day. Um, so, I feel like I was, I mean, it was a success. I mean, I only got three made of many, <laughs> but the hard part I feel like is done. And now it's just about assembling them. So I feel like it's gonna go um, fairly, fairly quickly. And then we could paint um, probably like day after tomorrow. I think it's gonna be windy tomorrow. So that would be hard. What are you not looking forward to on your to-do list? the crown molding in the guest bathroom. I don't wanna do it. It's so, I don't understand it. it, it the ceiling is sloped. Then there's angles of the crown molding. It's just like my brain cannot wrap around all of those angles. I don't know, I'm just dreading it. I'm just like not even thinking about it, but that is, I don't wanna do it. Can you please have your mom on the podcast again soon? She's actually on the next episode. We are talking about horror stories. It's going to be out next Wednesday because I post a new podcast episode every other Wednesday. Will she adopt me? You would have to ask her. I'm sure she would be happy to. But I don't share well. I get very jealous. I'm very territorial of my mom. So you probably wouldn't succeed in that. <laughs> I'm very like, she's mine. <laughs> But I hope you guys liked hanging out with me today. We were, we did accomplish some things. I feel very accomplished. And I ate a sandwich for dinner, so I'm, I'm, I feel good. I feel, I, I don't have any more groceries, so I'm gonna have to go to the grocery store. I've cleaned out our fridge for sure. Not having it anymore. So I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. I will see you guys again for a few in a few days for an, a renovation video over on my other channel. And then again Tuesday for another vlog. Bye guys. I'm going back to watch Outer Banks season three. I love it. It's so good. It's so much happening.